Well, that was interesting. I thought we fixed the crickets. Uh, no, you were just hiding a little bit more. Boy, that coronavirus has really gotten people afeard. Don't understand it. No, this is to interrupt your cricketism. We're trying hard here behind the woodshed. This will be BTWRLM361. As we're going to try and touch a couple more issues than that. And what's being deemed in our lives now today, you know, again, I told you coming into the first of the year, trauma-based, fear-based nonsense was going to hit us. Here it is, folks. We didn't learn the hindsight 2020. We did. We're just not going to respond quite, quite right. And then they got us into a place where I told you it was the most difficult to respond. So if we didn't figure it out the first time, it's going to be even more difficult, even if we did start to figure it out the first time. What I wanted to kind of touch on as I'm thinking about this, I realize sometimes, like I tell you before, it's not a, really a failure. If you do the research or any searching out, you find out what I'm talking about. But sometimes I don't set the basis. I've been talking about this medical martial law coming on. And uh, I there was I'm just trying to figure out how to realize when I came off broadcast last week that I didn't give a basis for why it becomes different now and why it is different relative to what? Relative to that they were so-called putting a quarantine on whole neighborhoods, whole blocks of, of towns, uh, I mean, in, in towns. The standard that used to be, and excuse me, yeah, Grimner, I did have a little bit of a hang-up, but about 30 seconds, so you should be coming now, I should be coming in now, but uh, so the uh, medical martial law, it's not, it used to be, and I guess this is the standard to, uh, to check, and I didn't explain this, about why you might want to consider why, how it's upscaled and it confirms really more the standard it used to be is no longer what they're doing and they've really kind of ramped it up was it used to be and it still is and if you look around supposed to be and in everything on a case-by-case basis everything is on a case-by-case basis unless they can have they have a demonstrable exigence that's that police power kick in all right so even there even in police in the medical issue the quarantines happened initially for case-by-case demonstrable proof and if you've listened to the news or even myself in explaining there's really not a true demonstrable proof it's all presumptive and I've said before that that's also a due process violation so you could see coming in we're under martial law Uh, because why because your civil liberties are being curtailed without any real proof and any other actual real power so I wanted to clarify that. Sometimes I run past and maybe we miss the foundation. I do. I, I maybe take it. I can't say take it for granted, but I just think that everyone ought to know it. And sometimes people don't. It used to be a case-by-case quarantine. Okay? So they are, they're now just locking down full areas. And, and there's no substantiation. And you, you see it. They say it all the time. But it's fear-based. The coronavirus fear. Okay, so that's that's an insubstantial thing, and a lot of it is insubstantial. That's not the, the, the demonstrable exigence that we're told is required to invoke the lawful basis for police power. And so I just wanted to clarify that for those that may not understand why this is important. It's well, a couple things. It's a, a, they're raising the bar of, of the corruption and the degradation, and you're allowing it. Now you say, well, what can I do about it? Well, maybe not by yourself, but you can start. You can be the one, and the one that starts it. Like, I, you know, I'm a little bit disappointed in the Virginia gun thing because there you had the mass population ready to move. Have you heard anything else from that? No. And this is what's going to happen. I'm going to maybe got to it. Maybe I'll get to a story here coming up uh, where that's happening now in Maryland. You're not going to rise up. And these people that are got the plan. You know, I'm still kind of reticent. It's real easy to say, oh, yeah, this is the global plan. I told you last week going out, there needs to be some more economic markers. Well, some of those markers popped up right after the broadcast Tuesday or so. And so this is really hard now, getting very hard to say this is a very interesting cover for a lot of instituting things. The problem is I don't like to, my, I don't like to just identify it's a globalist plan. There can be the those that will not let a crisis go to waste. That's not the same thing. The only way we get to stop it, stop this kind of a thing, is to 
do what we ha can do locally. And I've been explaining how that works, the fun how you physically go to places and what to say over the d decade now. And so I'm, you know, I don't know what really, I'm kind of to the point where I don't know what more to say about that. We'll just talk about some of this stuff. When you hear the uh, an interesting statement come out of the this issue that the coronavirus is being deemed the boomer remover, how cynical, how how decrepit is your society that you have people within it that would say that? And on the other hand, you see that would be beneficial to what the economic system in the lack of need to support the boomers they promised their retirement to, correct? And all that money that you that you hear about in the CAFRs and things and the reinvestments and the pensions and all that stuff, folks. It's a, another economic marker. It does have that to it, doesn't it? And again, well, what can we do with it? Well, we can make sure that we're not on the on the tracks when the train comes through, if it comes through. And this is, I'm really having trouble even discussing some of this to even buy into the fact that there's this coronavirus, that it's not more than a viral pneumonia. And we've heard, I've had, I've, we've had viral pneumonias in my lifetime. They went raging through places and you just tried to stay out of the way. It wasn't the level of, of causing emergencies to be happening for 10. In fact, you'll see, I think if I get to the news, I get to that part and remember to find it. For, oh yeah, it was. It was in the, it was in the, it was in the orders of the court. For 10 people getting killed, having uh, died. Boy, if they, if they move to abandon your civil liberties on every 10 people that, that, that died, that would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? At least they'd be more honest. But anyway, let me get on to something that came across the my way. I hadn't even, you know, I don't think about too much about this stuff. I'm a little bit out of it, but uh, maybe it's uh, that, that came under the idea for me that there's so much going under the skin of this as far as the cover that this is offering and what's being pushed through. And we have all the people that are all so great to go and find it all. Uh, to me, I'm, it's just, I'm not a political creature, so the politics of all this and what, why a, someone may have brought this on to keep Trump in power or to destroy him and all that. Yeah, I guess that's, again, that's all possible in there. But I'm more concerned with being able to get through this uh, this uh, year and keep moving with what I find I can do and avoiding a lot of the hype for sure. Not to disregard it, you've got to pay attention, but not to be rolled up too much in it that I see people are just not not covering it. They're just losing it, and they're losing it in, 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 in weird ways. And it's not obvious. This is a, um, a psychological losing it on top of it all. But at any rate, I can't, we can't stop all that. But here, uh, some of you may not make it to, uh, to do this thing that's now come on to us, silently and secretly so-called. I mean, and most of you may have already had the notice about this, uh, and it's the senseless, folks. I did this 10 years ago, remember? The senseless, the senseless workers. It's been sent out. There's rules made for this. We talked about this 10 years ago. I want to revisit it because they were worried about people re re not participating. They claim they have to have a participation because they, they need benefits, and so you need to talk about your elections and all this other stuff. Well, for those of us uh, that think about this, we realize that's a closed system. And I'm going to kind of hold this, show you again, and I'm going to refer to 10-year-old documents in the Internet, the news, that was explaining about this. So I'm just going to touch this so that those of you that are getting this, this isn't really, I guess, I guess I'm going to do a disclaimer. This is not advice. This is a way to look at this. This is the things you pull out and get copied into a bag of law if you decide you want to not participate. And you see the big threat on the front of the envelope that says you are, your response is required by law. And I, without getting, again, I, so much that comes to my mind. Um, that's only it if it applies. And so this is a jurisdictional challenge right up front in my mind. But there's a threat right in the front of the letters, I understand. And I'm looking at a picture from an article that shows it. You're required, your response is required by law. And then I look at that and I said this 10 years ago and before, is it really? And uh, as an administrative function, I already know it only, uh, you must do what you must do and the rest you don't have to must. That's not a shall under administrative rule. And so, what's the point? we got to go look at the rule. And, but before I do that, let me just touch back uh, a little bit. Well, first of all, they give you the notice. It's, it, here's the 2020 census. And you're going to have senseless workers knocking on your door. And they're going to want that information. 
And what happened last 10 years ago, we found out that may not be what, it's not so required. And we have, uh, uh, right from the senseless government website, it says responding to the senseless, well, excuse me, census, the 2020 census is happening now. You can complete, you can complete your questionnaire online by phone or by mail. And here's the heading in red, your invitation to respond. Your invitation to respond. Sounds like a request to me. Sounds like Dracula at the door as well. Knocking on your door. Are you going to invite you in? You can invite this thing in. And you could. I mean, I don't, if you have a sense you want to figure, fill out the sense list, that's up to you. I'm not going to say that you don't. But those of us that are paying attention have to pay attention continuously and not to deny but to understand the the battlefield that you're going to be dealing because if you deny this they may get you collected up and they may try to force the requirement by law on you and so they also bring an interesting date here you can uh, wherever you're living on April Fool's Day is what who will be responding and so but who who, who what are we what are we doing here they give you who should respond they talk to you about all these things i went through and looked at this and i didn't see any reference to any rule or any law, just talking to you back and forth about you and your mind, I guess you read it, and they talk to you, keep referencing Fool's Day for Fool's Day, which I found pretty fascinating. But I don't see here on your invitation that there's any criminal or civil penalty. And so I'm not bringing up anything new I didn't do 10 years ago, and I'm not going to do it on my opinion more than going to the statute. And we go back 10 years or so, and the contingency plans ready if threats to census arise. So, again, and if you remember that story, the threats were the people were going to fight having to give up the census information. But let me, under, let me remind you, anybody comes to your door, they're taking information whether you give it or not. They'll identify who you are, and this year they're bringing phones, and this is the first year you're going to be able to do it online. They make it so easy. And if it wasn't for the fact that I no longer trust what the federal government does or can trust it, I can no longer trust there's remedies for any of this. It's all seemingly a one-sided imposition, which is not a surprise when you look at it from my perspective that we're in an occupied territory. They are the main occupier, the main one, not the only one. Then uh, I have a different view of this, and I look at it differently, and I go through and I find what? The savings clauses or the constraints on the authority. Contingency plans rise if threats of censure arise. If you remember, uh, reading this story, we found that there was the an AP uh, article, uh, an AP company did a, uh, the AP company did a uh, FOIA, and I think this is the story that explains to us that in the FOIA, they also showed that there was a interesting. Uh, Amendment, if you, uh, an interesting interpretation that they gave the senseless workers. And it was a number c- one concern at the time and probably till today is refusal by, immigra- uh, a refusal by immigrants to participate. Now, those of you that hear that and don't listen behind the woodshed, you may think that they're the ones coming across the border. Remember, this is an, of, an official demand, if you will, by inv- for invita- of an invitation that comes from a district, not a state. And we're going to see that when we go to the code. But the one statement here was that most people wouldn't cooperate. The immigrants won't cooperate. Now, reversing resident, meaning that you are a actually resident in the district and not the state you thought you lived in, relative to even when you fill out all your other forms that are really federal, which is like your driver's license and all, because remember, that's a commerce document, so the Congress has the power of that. You understand how this is wor- working through, and you're looking jurisdictionally, not in your opinion, and not in what your thinks are, thoughts are, not what people on the Internet say. You go, what's the jurisdiction here, and how are you going to identify it? That'll be in the code. But first, we have a thing here that gives us a heads up that maybe that invitation isn't so important, and the requirement that you see to file may actually be a fraud on the outside of that letter. That's mail fraud. Now, I'm not saying to do any of this. I'm saying to think about this before you want to do any of the uh, responses that you have available to make the record that you don't want to give any information. My 
problem with all that is now what they have the phones. Remember those cameras and there's GPS part of um, co- um, GPS power uh, uh, apps that they can pull off when they're standing there talking to you. They take your picture and all. They're going to get all this information from you. So consider all this new technology that's being used for foreign agents of the Washington District to be out in a place you think is your state. And one of the documents, of, number one concern on the document of the FOIA that was gotten by the AP News back 10 years ago that was not let out to anybody but but was internal to the uh, to the census, senseless organization was uh, also placing a cap on costs if immigrants uh, try to evade the count. The respo- now, they said it was an invitation. So how can you evade? It's simple, you're going to do is avoid it. They haven't named that there's a crime for doing so yet. I haven't found it, and I haven't found it when we get to the code. But that's what they impose. That you evade the count. The response plan notes that a census, a census worker will attempt to visit a home six times at most, or fewer if a resident makes clear he won't cooperate. Before the worker questions neighbors to get the information. That doesn't sound too like an imperative to me. Sounds like they have an alternative that I talk to you about all the time, an alternative that they can utilize that allows the Census Bureau to fulfill its obligations under the Constitution, they tell us. If that fails, if they aren't going to get your neighbors to rat on you, if that fails, the Census Bureau will statistically impute data based on characteristics of the neighborhood households doesn't sound to me as an imperative for you to respond. And so what I can tell you right up front here, if the resident makes clear he won't cooperate, now I'm sure that's going to talk to non-residents or those that have been defamed by the system to be considered residents when you're not. That's a whole other technical discussion. So it's clear here, back in 2010, you have to make clear your objection. And I would make that if you plan to look at this and look at and do it, uh, do your objection, you make it as short and as anonymous as you possibly can if you're so-called face-to-face. And there's, I mean, I got a whole lot in my mind that I would, I'm working through on what is available for you to say that ramps up the addressment there. But uh, I think for this broadcast, it may be too much. People think it's a, a silver bullet and it's not. They can still bring you into court. You have to understand what this is all about. So their number one thing was costs. There's, and they're talking to immigrants. They're talking about residents. These are these foreigners that come living in states that came out, actually have a residence in the United States district. And where are we going to see that? Is we have to go to the statutes and the codes. And while I'm talking about this, for those of you that did the research on Title 28, Sections 81 to 132, three or so, this is that same discussion. When you find out legislative courts are not constitutional courts, legislative districts are not constitutional districts, the United States is not the place you thought it was, and it's limited to a place that's not a state. And yet they call that word a state, and that state is actually defined as territories and a district. And this is right in the code. Again, I don't use my logic here or my reasoning, you go back and you read the black and white and you take consideration for this. But these people are going to be scouring the land when you don't, when you don't file and they're going to, in my view, defame you into a residency a status that they don't have a proof for. And they're going to do it under threat, male threat of, of a law, which if I think if they want to tell me or anybody else, you can, they can catch you wherever you're walking. You can be walking out of a property and they'll stop you if you happen to interact, intersect with them. And they'll ask you where you live. They'll ask you all kinds of information. That if they don't have, if you know, and you, here's where you you don't admit into a status and you question it, they're only responding to residents in the district that they find in the states. And even more so, constrained even more to certain classes of people which are in the statute as well. That when they confront you and you say, I'm not going to cooperate, and if they say, but I'm, that could be, you know, I might, that may be against the law and I'll may file charges or something like that. You, that's where you go back to your state penal statutes where back to those extortions and ex, coercions are. 
that's where they take without a title and a right on pieces of information they're still collecting they don't even have and don't even know about you to impute without a title upon the, your property which is you and your freedom and your lack of asso- your right to not associate against the defamation or in or neighbor informant telling that you're of a status or the presumption you're of a status that they have to count is an extortion and a coercion of certain rights in you that you can respond calmly that uh, are they sure they want to go down through that that trail because in the state what they're doing is a felony multiple felonies I would limit my conversation myself not for you you have to think through this because that still has a ramification everything you do can be brought can be used against you in a court of law and will be used in a court of law if it goes there don't ever forget that ever and so that's how you have to start pr- promoting uh, yourself uh, when you walk in don't you, and then somehow you just want to get through this this situation the pop the code that we go that we say uh, we read is over you can go find, if i use i use the uh, the cornell website why because they have the notes that you can go through if there's notes you go track through in fact those of you that do the study or have done the study about the judicial districts through 28 usc uh, 81 to 132 or so 133 you 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 heavily use those notes because that's where the secret is you that's how you can figure out what's going on behind the scenes of this and uh, but in this case not so much you just read the front cover i just want to point out some things when you go through uh, this census law it's under title 13 and so we can we go through and as i i'm just going to go through what i have notes for from 10 years ago and we have section 141 which is predicated in my view on section 90 191 that the information that you is from them their position you got to look at it theirs is uh, taken by may be taken from the government agencies which includes the district of columbia the government agencies of the state which includes the district of columbia that provision of 191 is reference to 141, the as necessary part, which that brings up the idea that it's not so required by law. It's as necessary, and you heard early in the story, in the, in the report of 20, 10 years ago, it's they can find and impute data. They can make this stuff up. Doesn't sound like much of a requirement. Don't take my word for it. You have to read through this stuff, and you have to know about how this works in order to lay out how you're going to uh, defend yourself if they want to or just to stop the harassment at some level which I absolutely think it is but that's not for me to tell you you have to look and understand this when you look and put one the as necessary portion to 191 which is the options other options extended that information may be taken from a government agency of the state don't put your definition on state is the state includes the district of columbia the state includes the district of columbia and all those territories and so underneath the 191 provision of option, your question would be, did the secretary receive the plan requested from the state agency and over which class? Because when you read 191, it has to do with the class. Well, what is that class? And this is the class that they're interested in. And you'll find, again, it's within the venue of the district, not a state, even though these things exist in states that are states what the several states section 101 we go to now the the uh, age sex nativity percent per, per parentage i'll get it out defective dependent and delinquent class defective dependent and delinquent class the following questions namely age sex color nativity parentage literacy by race color nativity and parentage defective defendants and Defective, dependent, and delinquent classes, crime, housing and populations, prison populations. Is the questions they get to ask of, if you didn't think this place was an open-air prison, that sure gives a big indication. Unless you step back and say, "Eh, I don't think I'm going to opt into that. I'm not going to agree. And I, this district is over the 
over the object it's over the obligations of the federal government over its federal obligations not in the state that they're defaming you by taking the information that they're going to ask you found in the stories they're going to be asking for which are age and sex and color which is all literacy by race sounds racist to me but anyway this is the way the uh, this is the way the liberals will, or whatever the progress I don't even know what to call them anymore these lunatics will, will twist all this stuff it's all legalisms it has nothing to do with your feelings or your beliefs it has to do with status and jurisdiction when you get into the legal are you a defective dependent or delinquent class did pursuant to option 9191 did the, the secretary of the state you live in prefer that they need to talk with you through the plan that they advanced to the secretary of the census bureau and is it as necessary relative to 141 and is is there any other way they can get the information well you've understood now they can impute it just from neighborhood statistics and so I don't know how much do this let me go back to the before I forget this part the prison populations let me correlate something it's not here in the code let me correlate this residency and housing and populations. You got a prison population. The housing, don't forget, they consider you as lodged in the with the prison population is your housing. And so this is a you look at these what they have a right to ask for and you attach it to something particular in a place. Then you find out that you're not to my mind, I, I'll say it my I am not subject to this code. And if I ever was to receive the letter and they want to say this was for you, I would be preferring the fact of the mail fraud and the defamation and the and the extortion and the coercion, the freedom from associations being violated under the very same constitution that they're claiming a district has the right to extend itself over the whole of the this organi organic establishment and affect the posterity as what? Defective, dependent, or delinquent classes. And so, this is not just limited to this. You can go and read and read and read. There's a whole lot of sections to this thing. Hey, but I've just uh, gone through again and remind you again. I said if uh, they already have a note amongst their workers that they did 10 years ago, if the so-called resident makes clear he won't cooperate, then they can go back and get the information by the neighbors. The neighbors can, can talk to, talk about you. My thought is if they make any a conclusion on what a neighbor's information might be, that's good, that defames me or imputes a, imputes an obligation to me, that's going to be treated as felonies. And what? Cons conspiracy to defraud me of my rights and status. But anyway, that's my words. So they can go ahead and they can impute the data elsewhere. They also have the obligation to come from a plan by the state, the Secretary of State. What is that office, folks? The Secretary of State is the Commerce Office of the state. Which also then says, for those of you that have been doing that, this study, for a long time I hear the people talk about it, the prisoners are in commerce. Think about that. And remember, voluntary Involuntary slavery is outlawed, not voluntary slavery. Anyway, let's move on. I've got the links here for the one third, the 191, which title is Geographic Scope. So let's go real quickly and read that. Each of the censuses authorized by this chapter shall include each state, the District of Columbia, the Virgin Islands, Guam, the Commonwealth of the Northern Marianas Islands, the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico, and as many... Uh, as may be determined by the Secretary, such other possessions and areas over which the United States ex exercises jurisdiction, control, or sovereignty, inclusive of other areas over the United States exercises, the United States exercises jurisdiction or control, shall be subject to the concurrence of the Secretary of State. Now, that is a mouthful paragraph, but if you look at what the word state means, it's the district and the territories. And it exercises jurisdiction and control 
cannot extend to those of you that it can't extend to. And the sovereignty, I've already shown you how you can show the sovereignty doesn't actually exist relative to its obligations and duties. And as we touched in Virginia with the guns, the sovereignty is limited to, to that it, in such a way that it can't affect the posterity. Isn't that correct? Now, I went through the, the analysis of the individual, but you've, you've got to pull this together right. You can't just throw it together. Yeah, but you can see how this can be, what their limitations are listed, and you it's up to you to not cooperate, but in the proper way. That's the limit of their authority. It doesn't extend to the states, does it? They say state, but you find the state is really just this listing, any one of those things that are listed there. And again, the Section 101 de pertains to defective, dependent, and delinquent classes. It's all, you see, dependent, that's like taxes. So we're, look, we're describing the federal jurisdiction. And so, I mean, it all depends on how you, on, on how you um, do the analysis here for you. I have my, my interpretation. I have what I will, may do if it ever comes. I have people that I talk to that I'm showing this stuff to, and they will do what they will do. Uh, but uh, while you have this and you feel pressured, I find this very interesting. This comes at the same time that you're going to be locked in your houses, right? I mean, you get to go online and make it so easy. They have a captive audience now, too. How the how the little senseless taker is not going to be the vector for all this sickness, I don't know. But that may be another reason why you can say go away if you're so predisposed. Now, something came out. Now, moving into now what I told you was coming down, the proof of it hit. I said this looks like medical martial law. It looks like the, this coronavirus was the cover for that. Uh, there Waiting, again, you always have to kind of wait a bit to see the proofs. That it's an objective basis that we talk from. And we got a uh, Twitter from Gary Long through Daryl Miller, and thank you, Daryl, for pulling this forward. It was a Washington U.S. district order called a general order. That triggered my mind again about Libra Code was a general order. And we're talking about it. That's a district order as well. And so I tracked down the original documentation from that forward and lead to me, and this came right after last broadcast, that the Supreme, and I found additionally, and this is in chrono chronological order, I try to go that way because it's important to keep track of some of this. The Supreme Court of Washington issued, in the matter of the response by Washington State Courts to the public health emergency in Washington State, They've issued a public, in the matter of a public health response uh, by the Supreme Court itself. So this is your judicial branch. Essentially, when you read the order, it capitulates without more question to the act of the executive branch, the governor. And they go through quite a bit of whereas is here. You'll see the whereas form. And it essentially gives the states, the judges in the state, Authority to administer their courts to ensure safety of court personnel, litigants, and the public, which impliedly means they're going to close the courts. This is now the state level. They don't reference the federal one because it didn't come up yet, the one that was forwarded to me from the federal court. The federal district court then shows up and brings up, again, this is the USDC court, what I just referred to at Title 28, 81 through 132 or so. This is a legislative federal court, not a constitutional court, issuing a general order. The court operations under the exigent circumstances created by COVID-19 and related coronavirus. Did you know there was related coronavirus, folks? This was done through an in-reaction, an in RE action. We'll go to the quickly to Wikipedia, which is good enough for this for our purposes. In re it simply means in the matter of. You heard that in the state paper. It said in the matter of this issue. That was done when we go down and sign on the 4th of March. 
And then the federal district court made one, and they signed theirs, I think, on the 6th. Yes, 6th. And these are in the matter of. And what's interesting about in the matter of, uh, R in RE, is they are understood to implicate that there's no adverse party and the matter is otherwise uncontested. What does that bring up? That's the presumptive authority they're using. In fact, I think it's the federal court that used an interim guidance by the CDC as its authority. In other words, they have already determined there is no challenge that can be made, and none of you stepped up in Washington to answer into this, even after the fact, to show that the judiciary may have failed here. To use an interim guidance as settling a presumptive matter, I told you, actually requires a court case. They're settling that here with these orders, and they're not going. They're going to go unchallenged. And I say that generally, any and one of you who are there can step up and invalidate what I'm saying here. But I don't think that you will. Not that I want to see that, uh, but that's just the way we we don't work. That's the crickets. But they've set it up. I told you they were setting up the the martial law. They what they did in the state and what the federal court did. The federal court specifically says they're going to get rid of your speedy trial right. They did it on a presumptive fear, not a proven one. When they got rid of your civil liberties, what did they do, folks? I mentioned it last week. I mentioned what it was. To perfect the United States District Order, there is a press document you can get that I I put together. I, I just give you the link in the blogcaster. And as I say that, I, I think... Sound Minds over at YouTube, they'll probably be throwing these links up. I was able to figure out a way to roughly get some stuff out, and they might be putting these links up if you want to read the documents, or just wait till the broadcast you read them yourself. And again, I'm not talking about the coronavirus. I'm talking about watching this military martial law, the susceptibility of the society to it, unfold right before your eyes, as I told you it was coming. Not that I said that, but that this is this is your opportunity to watch this eyes open, but you're not responding, so I don't know what more to say. It's going to happen. This is happening right before your eyes. How they do it right before your eyes, with all your Second Amendment right, with all your right of free association, with all your right to not associate. They're doing it anyway, and they're doing it presumptively, and they're doing it as a, as a course of action that has presumed also to not have an a um, opposition. There's no adversary to this, they're saying. That that came out, the, res the taking of your civil liberties, even just the one, which they're doing more, is, you'll find it, I don't know what else to say, it's martial law, folks. Now, what's running behind that? I told you it's already been running. This You're now seeing, you're seeing this thing I've been telling you about. If you just understand the dynamic of it. A territorial legislative court in the federal side came two days after the state court to declare a presumptive fear-based emergency that was already in the works to be that. Didn't have an adverse, a complaint against it capitulated to remove civil liberties, and yet the government still runs, tells you there's a government behind the one you thought you saw. And it's doing what? It was called up weeks and weeks ago, and it was in the military. And the removal and suspension, I'll use the word, suspension of your civil liberties is martial law. So you're living, whether you notice or not, they did this to you back in the 1st of March already. But you don't see anything going on, just like I've been telling you, wouldn't know if martial law if you saw it. Like they've been doing the spaghetti western to you. And so, as I think, thank you, Daryl, again, pulling these out. I wouldn't have known. I don't, again, I can only get out so far. Uh, these came up. These just perfected exactly what I've been telling you were going to happen. They also did it because of the coming, the coming emergency. They're almost predictive. And this was set up, again, as a... Um, uh, predict it's like lots of predictive things i guess you can not put it, it, it's uh, uh, coincidences you could say don't have a, a correlation 
I tend to think some of these do, and we can pay attention again to what they're saying, how they're doing it, who the players are involved. But they named, a, they suspended your civil liberties. You don't realize you're literally living in martial law, whether or not you're quarantined, whether or not you understood that they used to do everything on a case-by-case -case basis. Now you're all in one basket. Should have been another clue. You no longer live in the place that you thought. You are in this open-air prison. There's an argument they do get to come and ask you questions for the senseless. No, I wouldn't agree to that. I wouldn't have you agree with it. What I'm saying is you really have to kind of kick back and watch. From You look at the thing from the perspective of the one coming from you before you start putting your opinion on it. Okay, so this is a different, you have to think a little different here. You're not capitulating to anything. You're doing it as an analysis to figure out what you're dealing with. And I'm telling you that there's organic things there to step, push right back in their face. But you have to do it, and it has to be done in a peaceful manner, if you will, in the right and thing, and be careful that they don't throw the what they believe is the demonstrable exigence, the invisible boogeyman on you, because you're not going to have a defense against that. You do not have the expertise in the agencies that they you can uh, defend against in the moment. If there was a court of law and you knew how to confine that there, you could show the presumptive nature was a violation and the courts did not keep the republic. The courts capitulated on a presumption of fear. This is the court case, too, where the United States a federal territorial USDC court utilized, I think, it. where was that? They utilized the fact that people in the district have died. Ten people in the district have died. How many times have they shut down the courts because ten people have died anywhere? On a Interim guidance on a presumptive fa uh, uh, myth, the tests of which they've admitted they can't do, the continuing information that's coming out would tell you in the science side of when they keep finding things about this, this critter, whatever they think they're finding, can't be tested for yet because they're just finding out about it. When they stop doing the tests, just like they did the Fukuzilla, well, we're not going to do the test because we're going to, we're, you'll find out it's not really over there. It's been over here. And in this case, you're going to find out this is not, well, we don't even know what we're talking about. But 10 people died in the district and they shut the courts down. Your civil liberties were suspended because 10 people died. Is that rational at all anyway? This whole thing, you can attack on that alone. And yet I'm going to, again, hear crickets. I'm trying to interfere with the crickets today. And, okay, you're listening, but will you turn around and do something? And for those of you that are outside the state of Washington, I'm not so sure you have a cause, but you may know someone there that may have a, may have a way to jump at this. I don't expect much. The point is, I've said, it's about people starting to stand up in mass and educated and vigilant that these things are, are being taken away from you for no demonstrable exigence in reality. On the other hand, you know, if there is this viral pneumonia going back, we do have things to consider. But why do we get all freaked out about it? I mean, like I said, I've, I think I've remembered twice in my life viral pneumonia went through society a bit, and it wasn't no big deal. I mean, yeah, you don't want to catch it, and, you didn't want, and yet if you caught it, it would took you down, but and people died. But anyway. Let's go over to here. What telegraphed to me, uh, and, and it was lingering, and I had to go check it out finally, that this was the uh, the be careful moment. I'm looking, we're looking for that pin, not the haystack that we're looking for the needle. We want to look for the pin, but we don't want to reach in the pile too fast and get stuck ourselves. Uh, but it's this guy name that they went and referred to immediately as the expert, you know, drip under pressure, uh, was what I called it last yes last week. Uh, this guy here, Dr. Fauci. Anybody, anybody trigger on a language uh, meaning in there? And so we, I did some quick research, just in the Italian language of Dr. Fauci, who has worked with the NIAID, NIH Gov organization as a director since 1984. He's the guy with all the answer. He's the answer man. He's the guy that has done all this infectious disease things. He, I told you, he knows. 
He knows all about malaria. He knows all about those chemicals that are there. He knows all about how to be the guy and the expert to bring forth this stuff. And I went back and I looked at the name. What is the word? What is the name as a word mean in Italian? F A U C I, and you find out it means jaws or mouth. But more interestingly, it's figurative. The word, the term, Fauci, uh, is a figurative term when you speak the language to mean to fall prey to. So they've brought someone forward that we have the opportunity to fall prey to. I don't, as a coincidence, maybe I can't prove to you is causative, but this sure is indicative on the whole and entire condition of how these things get brought forward. They tell you by who what the you who the who comes to play the game. Now, I'm gonna go with this interpretation because this is what I sense is going on. What do I need to say more? You're falling prey to the removal, the limitation of civil liberties on a presumptive issue without a trial to that. That is the definition of martial law. I don't really know what more to say about that to convince people. If you don't know that much, you certainly have to go read more. It's not that hard. It's not this big a deal. This is a big deal. Don't, don't, don't get misinterpreted on what I just said there. This is a big, big deal. They took you down without firing a shot, and they did it with an invisible bogeyman that they can't even tell you actually exists during flu time, no less. Remember, the court finding was there was other coronavirus that may be involved. That alone is an ambiguous statement to an emergency. Okay, so we, they give us a lot to attack them with if we just would. So this lineage comes along in the first of March here between last time I talked and now, and then Trump uh, the Trump administration declares the corona emergency. Excuse me. So, th so that's what's happened in March. What happened right before that was Trump administration declared the coronavirus emergency, not the national emergency. And I'd forgotten about this little thing. He'd already set up. Remember I told you last week he'd set it up to get the money to flow, and that's all the, the states had to do was start declaring emergencies. The judicial capitulated in Washington. It was the actual entry point for this thing, if we believe the China the China narrative. And that's okay. We could go ahead and do that. I'm not saying we, we deny much of anything. We just look at what's going on. So Trump administration, right before that, declared the corona emergency. And this was the first time that quarantines were issued in 50 years by the story I'm looking at here. And I don't have time to stick around and read a lot of these. You can find them and read them yourself. But it's important to watch because of the way the law comes through. You look inside the law when we get there, or at least the one that they're claiming, not the not the martial law, the ostensible and plausible law that they're helping you on the beneficial side, uh, that you'll find out that it was important that these things gone in the order like I suggested yesterday. So Trump in the beginning, right at the end of the month, comes in and declares the emergency generally, not a national emergency. This is then followed up by the courts. And then the coronavirus is officially declared pandemic by the World Health Organization. Now, we all, I think most of us heard that, but I want to point out something. Because I've been telling you that they had to back off on this for a while until they can identify something. And I want you to go back and listen where you can find. I've got a couple of links here that talk from the WHO, the, the WHO, not the rock group and not the OWL, the World Health Organization. And they have a, I got an update of links and what they're talking about. Uh, the events as they happen, they're letting it out. They're kind of laying it out for you about uh, what's going on. Uh, but this coronavirus was officially declared. And I want you to go back and listen very carefully. In fact, the link I have, and which may be up uh, on one of the videos at Sound Minds, I don't know. The You look very carefully at what they quote the guy is saying. And notice, they said they will not change their assessment, but they're changing their assessment that they characterized the COVID-19 as a pandemic, as almost soft-pedaling the point. And then notice very carefully, and go to the video, and go listen very carefully. You will not hear the word novel. And so, they have that on their novel virus website. But the phrase and the declaration was not due to a novel virus. 
That confirms almost what the federal court was finding. How'd they know that, too, as well, before all this? It's just interesting. I don't even want to put much pressure on it. The point is, as you're watching the countries, and it's rolling out to the globe, being locked down, like I told you, China's the best place to start this out. And then it's interesting, it just jumped over into Europe, and they took down most of Italy, if not all of Italy. Now you're just watching the doors closing. Which, in one regard, if this is correct, is is, is, pro, is a, a contagion, yeah. Why didn't they just shut down all the air flights first, though, back in December when they knew about it? Anyway, that's, I don't want to get off into the conspiracy. we got to deal with reality here. Now they declared a pandemic, but the words did not say novel. The federal court actually offers there's a couple of co- coronaviruses. The WHO admits they've never declared a, something like a pandemic on a coronavirus. And when you look at what, why, you realize that they're just the flu. That's why they're seasonal. And so, right, I just find interesting, more of interest than I want to point out here, I mean, as a, as a discussion, in-depth discussion, right as they declare the pandemic, Hollywood is given their front man, the corona face. The, the face of the coronavirus is none other but than who? But Tom Hanks, where him and his wife gets tested positive for coronavirus. Uh, we were getting a test. What is a test? So they put a face on the harm of coronavirus. Well, it just so happens that Tom Hanks also apparently has diabetes. And so he's uh, got a different type of risk, doesn't he? Is that most of you all? It might be some of you. But the face now is a weakened face that also did what? Lived in, as one of the characters, lived in a, in a uh, what is it, uh, airport. The same pictures of which you'll see have now been, the gates are kind of closed for the checking and the passing through of all this emergency that was declared that Trump made. No one can get it anywhere. Uh, Then you pass through an airport, you're looking like herds of cattle standing around for last night, the the report I got was six hours. You think there's anything communicable about that stock pen, folks? And so the promotion is on. Hollywood, they put the face on it. It's Tom Hanks. It seems to... could correlate a day later with the pictures we're seeing. That, uh, then, uh, and Trump declaring that coronavirus and cuts services to the EU without uh, without uh, head notice, which is fine. That's going to shut it all down. They should have shut it all down in China. Stranding, didn't have a consideration for anybody. Allowed it from the whole, whole step up, uh, starting up. He's declared a national emergency now. Right? So this is a now the triggering of what I was telling you was being set up for last last year to a specific law that they're, they're talking. And by the way, if you hadn't heard, uh, Trump has tested negative for the coronavirus, even though all the reports are he's been surrounded by people in the places he'd been in the last two or three weeks by people who are coming down with ex- the tests being positive. I'm not going to say one thing or not. This is just looks to be a big promotion that could very well be a viral pneumonia that you don't want to catch. So we wash your hands, folks. Do the things you need to do. Stop stop getting yourself stuck in stock pens underneath the uh, auspices of we're helping and checking you. You know, we're going to slow down the process or whatever. But uh, what are they, given the Washington Declaration, there's more than one coronavirus, what are they looking for? A little thing pops up that I was saying before. They don't even know what they're actually looking at. Uh, they're looking at it better now. The spike glycoprotein of the new coronavirus 2019 NCOV contains a ferrin-like cleavage site absent in the COV of the same clade. It's the coronavirus with a different little point to it. That makes a big difference, apparently, in how they can go ahead and, and make up something. Is this predicting that they will be able to promote they have a vaccine, an RNA vaccine, no less, folks? It seems like to me it also points out that these things are pretty specific. They're not telling. I noticed, have you heard the silence around how these tests work, what these tests do, how they find out what they find out? No, you're not going to hear much of any of that. And so you look around the world and you're looking for the anomalies. I've told you, look for the, the, the anomalies, and I find these things. And this is again from a secret to Beijing Twitter. Find it a very interesting site. Not much support documentation, but. Interesting things to, to, to spy in on, if you will, to see what's interesting from this one individual. 
that at the same time they post that a 74-year-old prisoner in Fresne, I'm not French, folks, but Canuc Canucistinians over there in, what, Ottawa or whatever, you can, you can, it's F-R-E-S-N-E-S, you can maybe send me an email. A prison in the southern uh, suburb of Paris has been diagnosed with coronavirus pneumonia, according to the French Justice Ministry. The man was jailed, listen here, folks, the man was jailed on August 8th and was admitted to the hospital and diagnosed after showing symptoms, suspected symptoms on Friday. He's there before this thing even is a gleam in his, the father's eye. It's a gleam in the lab technician's conjuring. 74-year-old, that's the aged class that seems to be taking it the hardest. Even though a 100-year-old guy got through it, I understand. 74 in a prison that's been locked up since August. He's come down with suspected symptoms. That's the presumptive uh, fear-based trauma that they're imposing on everybody. And then there's this corollary that people in Wuhan, back in Wuhan, a staff at the Wuhan wet market said that he still can't believe the market is the source of the virus. He unveiled that most of the, of the 27 initially reported infected people had one commonality. They like to play cards while many of them are not from the market. And so trying to parse this, we're saying, well, what are they talking about? What did the other other coronavirus, the, the Washington Territorial Court talked about? What are we looking at here? Where did these, what is coming down on us from where? And it, interestingly, something comes up. I dropped in a memory hole. And as I'm going through this, this pops up. Remember I talked about Tom Hanks and diabetes, and you might be more at risk. Here they've been, uh, this little story pops up about a study talking about a common artificial sweetener might make you fatter and sicker, which only reminded me, when they talk about artificial sweeteners that were made up with bio uh, gene-modified organisms to give you all that sweetness that you want. And I remember this early, early on when I was young, uh, when the artificial sweeteners came out and they had uh, Pepsi whatever and Tab and all that and I had a brother-in-law who went on this stuff, and after he started drinking it, he, tried to, he had a little trouble with weight. Not a lot, a little bit. But when he started drinking this stuff, he puffed up like a big balloon. And I told him, you know, why don't you get off that stuff? It's not, not doing you good any, any good. Well, it comes out here. Well, how many years later? 30, 40 years. Common artificial sweetener might be making you fatter and sicker. So the, you, your, your diet has been bringing you into a condition where you're probably like Tom Hanks, higher risk, and don't know it. And so the face they put on coronavirus is actually speaking to those of you that haven't been paying attention or thought you were and tried to do other things. And this chemistry in your body is your body's responding because it wants to heal itself. It starts doing things and it's not making you any better. And so your, your diet brings you in and you are now a walking susceptibility to nature. And so when I'm talking, you think, oh, I don't have diabetes, or I don't have this, or it doesn't look like it's real. There's things in the world, there's things in the world that are dangerous that you can bring yourself susceptible to because of the way that, that you've been eating or been offered food. And this is uh, artificial sweeteners. When you read where they are, it's very difficult to avoid. We can go down the track, oh, this is all planned, but that's up to us to be more responsible as well and limit our access. But the point is, is that what are they stopping from? We got the the federal district territorial court saying, "Oh, there's more than uh, than COVID-19. There's actually other ones that we're going to shut this whole. We're going to steal your civil liberties over, presumptively, on an interim guidance. How much more administrative do you have to get, folks? And you have to also understand if you go look at the authority of the CDC it, and look at the, the the Title 50 authority from the Army, they interrelate at some point." The army will be called up to do certain things to advance, advance what they figure on interim guidance they need to do. So don't think that you may not one day go down the road and can't pass or you're going to be collected up to make sure you're not the vector. And remember, you see the evidence of the problem is they got had a lot of people in China in that hospital that collapsed, folks. They collapsed. They 
put a bunch of people in there. None of the people that were in quarantine in that building were found to be positive. Family was found hugging each other dead. Didn't have the coronavirus in quarantine. If you don't think this could happen, and they're building the, the evidence of the plausibility of their authority in the United States where you think you're free. It's only free dumb, folks. Heavy on the dumb right now, but I don't want to get too far too far afield here. And so where is this? Where, where are these coronavirus? Where are these sicknesses but in nature? And I dropped something off, and I, caught, I said, let's put this in the memory hole for now. And I did this back in September of 2018 in Twitter. This week, someone pops up and dumps a whole lot of links and study that they had done relative to leaked documents containing information of a laboratory located in Tbilisi named after U.S. Senator Ronald Lugar. The lab was had secretly conducted experiments on people and some of what had lethal out some of which had lethal outcomes. I don't want to focus on all that part. I want you to go get this link, and I want you to see for yourself when you go through the links that West Finale, the other account that dumped this into that memory hole pot, um, cachet that I laid, I didn't know what really to do with it. It was just important at the time as I was reading a different story. It laid down a whole bunch of stories that go through, and I want you to find the one that tells us that in the Ukraine, Azerbaijan, and Uzbekistan area, they know these organisms, these things are in nature, and they go there to collect them in order to study them. That in December, 13,000 packages of Tamiflu was sent to Georgia, where this is in the area. And they just now told the people, uh, issued an order that people that are prescribed can be prescribed Tamiflu through that same laboratory. Was, well, I thought, an interesting observation. These organisms are natural. I'm not saying that the one that's coming through that's maybe been weaponized, if it is there, is what we're talking about. But there's labs that are known to do that. That the people, a country that is central to one of the places this is done, has issued Tamiflu. What I didn't get to do is go research to see whether or not what their incidence of coronavirus response is relative to whether or not the Tamiflu and how much it's been issued based on what they started to do when this thing started in December. Point is, where are is the origination? When these people that are bringing down medical martial law can rely on something that's everywhere in the season for it, how do you prove that it's not? Taking, being taken advantage of is the same question I ask you about the spaghetti western you think is a free United States again maybe the United States is an organism not you not the people but this all came together when there's multiple coronaviruses that the, that the court just recognized to shut down your civil liberties and we find they're natural how did the why, what's the interim guidance value when they can't say that nature wasn't the, wasn't exclude nature. In other words, you also notice, and this is all consistent when you understand how to tie this together, the EPA will not monitor wildfires if they can be found to be naturally caused. This is the same principle right here. But I find it fascinating, all during this, this information, that someone pops up on something I dumped in Twitter in 20, uh, end of 2018 and now exposes, again, if we had a question, the United States is involved thick, and now I add it to the administrative imposition to the judiciary and say, when all this evidence is in the world that it's around in the world, and it is natural, how did you go about taking away people's civil liberties? Essentially declaring the judiciary declared martial law. I don't know any other definition for it, folks, so you can maybe make stuff up, but I, every, what do we call it? Statoc, st st uh, stratocracy? That's what, we, that's what there's a name for that, and all you see is the analogies and synonyms for that is a martial rule. That's where we are. We went from caucasocracy to that. And so, 
let's move on. This stuff is everywhere. I don't know what to call it. I don't know if it's natural ma- made up, but it's something you may, uh, may face. It's in the season for it. It's uh, contagious at some level. It kills 10 people, and they shut the whole and entire government down in Washington. Gave the administrators of the ju- of the courts carte blanche to, to disregard the rules. Took away your right to speedy trial. All on a fear, not a demonstrable exigence, on an interim guidance of an untested agency authority. But what are we dealing with here? And so I wanted to find out, well, what, what is it to be affected? What's it like to have coronavirus? We can search that out. Uh, LBC speaks to Brit who contracted the virus. Now he goes and he clarifies what I reported on here was the, the whisk, hot whiskey and honey cure. We now find out maybe not so much. We find out that he didn't know what he had. It was a bad flu. He started, he's a teacher. He's in China. He's got, he does the hot whiskey and, and, and honey because that's all he knew. And then this thing actually comes and kicks him in the tail a week later. When you read through the story in the timeline, it, it, he's dealing with this for oh, about a month. And then I think, you know, as you, anybody who knows that when you get involved with a viral thing, it, it affects you for months later. But what they did is they brought him into the hospital just for one night, send him back out, and he had the problem, but he's by himself. He had to get stuff, and so be careful of that as you prepare your mind on how this works. But he survived. He's also 25, so don't throw that in there. But we can find out what this thing does. We can find out and, and reduce the hype in our mind. We do have to prepare for not having because the world's going nuts about trying to collect up. In fact, uh, Gary, did you finish your uh, – Gary L., did you finish your uh, – toilet paper tent that you're watching TV in your living room. Uh, that was a little meme that went through. That's what's going on. We're all be covered with our toilet paper. I hope you all are preparing a lot better than that. Got just enough. But we have to then change because the nut world gets nuts and when you go to get something, it's not there even if you weren't we're freaked out about something. And this is how they get the herd to move. Uh, we get a big influx of uh, economy there, didn't we? Well, for what? A hurricane that never comes? Now, I'm not saying don't prepare. I think for those of us that do this, we're, you know, we push in to at least try to be prepared a month, if not six, if not two years. So the, the, to that point, I'm not saying. But when, if this thing hits you, go find out what it really does. It's it's serious. And so you really got to pay attention. It comes to you at you in waves, like, a, like any good healthy flu would. But do we blow our, this thing out of proportion? Do we suspend civil liberties? Well, maybe you and I wouldn't, but there's a whole lot of people, the whole lot of the government that already did, and I hear crickets on that also. First Brit to contract coronavirus refused drugs to beat infection with hot whiskey and honey was the story. I have a link for that so you can remind what the media told us then. We then have the report of what really happened from the guy, and we can look around and find out what's going on. There's another report, and I don't know if I have, if I put it up. Uh, I can't remember now uh, here. But somebody was reporting also that they're an older gentleman, uh, and it was a flu, and it was bad, but it was dealable, and how how he coped with that, and he survived. And so part of this is, yeah, we got so, uh, perpetually here. Don't get nuts. Stay, you know, anyways, do I have to say stay calm? No, you just deal with, yeah, stay calm. Just deal with the reality. It's going to get serious on lots of fronts. And this now brings up the idea how much of a plan it might have been or how much a crisis is not going to waste. And the whole point will be how you respond. And my view is a little bit more technical. We already have to respond just to kind of be it along. But we also have this bigger thing going on. For the United States of America, you're, you, oh boy, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you all. You've been locked down, and no one's really commenting. And where my highest hopes were with Virginia, because the mass of the community was on board, and it didn't really go any further, and the response by people is not going to be integrated enough. So we'll cut back. We'll do what we can for ourselves. The the gentleman, the the teacher, 25 year old kid, he said he used a tiger balm. He says it's a it's it's a um, Vicks Vapo Rub on steroids in China, and they use that, and he put his head, uh, he put some of that in a hot bowl, bowl, a steaming bowl, and he breathed that for an hour, for an hour until it was done, he redid it, just so he could breathe. 
this is a this is an airway problem and you need to have oxygen so be prepared for for that but there's a way to deal with all this while the government is using it to clamp you down in other ways you may have something actually to deal with and there's ways to go about it now this all brought up uh, to my mind when was all this done and i you know i don't know if i did or didn't i have a sense we might have mentioned it the way i don't really do things formally i was wouldn't i didn't spend the time to go find it but i was talking to you at a time and I talk to you all the time about this, so it's, that's part of the question, that there was a time in the future that I told you this was coming. That this was, And you could see it in the administration of the CDC and the, and the Federal uh, Registry, that the CDC was making rules. There was lots of rules coming down. There always is lots of rules, but particular, ones in particular. And you could get on this, the Federal Register note, notices to see these things come through. That uh, this was brought up again, like, okay, where was the origination? The CDC's coming down with interim guidance. Where did that come up with that wasn't a violation? Well, part of this is they do it because they have the uh, the Chevron deference until someone shows up to show that it wasn't valid. No one shows up. So we went back. Uh, upon this report, the CDC's new quarantine rule could violate civil liberties was written back a ways. And so I pulled this up, and I want to do this not to have us go look through the regulations, which I do have links for. For those of you that want to understand how this works, you do need to go to these regulations and go read, because within the writing of the final rule for these quarantines, you'll learn how they try to evade or avoid or plausibly credit themselves for doing what they end up wanting to do. And there was nobody who could well, there is some people that actually caught them. They had to change when they got caught, like terminology being incorrect, in clear, things that weren't clear. But if you look very carefully, they're very sly and slick on how they move the agenda where they want. But I want to point this out, that back in this time, I can't remember now if this is in 2014 when he writes this, Ed Young. This gentleman was involved with understanding what he thought were uh, could violate civil liberties. This is where I want to point out when we this is where they do this. If if this gentleman saw that, I hope and I maybe I can't say that he didn't. This is where you find out if you're someone who can understand this is where you need to jump in and you need to write your comment to contain within what you can find as a violation these things that they're now utilizing as interim guidance no less, presumptive guidance. Apparently nobody made the comment to shut that down then, that this rule now is in place. So if you want to know how they're getting the power to quarantine, it's through this rule. And so this, again, I wanted to highlight, not a discussion about the rule, because there's no way we can go through it, all of it. I was reading through some of it. It's just a, it's what I read all the time on how the agencies plausibly give them authority, and no one sues if it's outlined. They just let it go through, and this is the the kind of construction of the estab uh, the construction of occupation that we live under under the administrative side. And so the, here I saw evidence that someone was calling it out. Not many people came. There was a, a bit of response, but apparently not the proper response to con constrain it. Till today that we now see their use of an interim guidance could not be the exigent, cir exigent circumstance, and maybe that's where somebody in Washington actually goes and attacks this whole thing. There's actually quite a bit in that Washington de territorial court order to attack if you're kind of open to this stuff. Now, I've been asking you to do that. I know it's a little bit of a pain, but a lot of a pain, and you feel like it doesn't do any good, but it, again, to me, it's us learning as a becoming mass a mass of educated people that start doing the more proper thing, the more focused thing, and the more focused thing that other people can understand so it's not so obscure. It's not, well, let me move on to this, and I'd, again, I'd hesitate to uh, move on to a video that was sent to me to look at coronavirus and gun confiscation. The guy looks genuine. He absolutely believes it. I don't want to diminish anything about that part, but it irritates me and what I keep talking to you about that we all maybe I do it too but you don't and you don't tell me but I haven't found where I've been too wrong when I talk about these things when you go to the codes or to go to the codes before you talk because immediately it comes out with coronavirus and gun confiscation and then he tells us about how they're how they're coming after this and we're going to be constrained and all that and that's what actually got me thinking about well, what was the regulation for that okay what are they using to come and take our guns 
if I go to the internet of uh, the wisdom of the internet and go to YouTube and figure this out, well, what is the background? Did anybody go check? Well, it irritated even more at me even more when I went to check because there was even more power if you just commit to reading first. And I was again disappointed. But okay, what was the power of this to take your guns? That that on its face would be a violation. As I look at Virginia Constitution, clearly that's a violation. So we went, and I went back, and I said, "What were these emergency and disasters be declared now that we're living under?" Well, it was. It said that it was this called the Stafford Disaster Relief and Emergency Assistance Act. Now I'm not. Again, we could go through lots of these things. I'm not going to. I just want to point out there's a thing to go read. There's the authorities that are uh, powers that are given. You remember, you're dealing in, in the imperative of even an undemonstrated, demonstrable inst uh, uh, exigence that is done by a guidance that brings all this together. But what this act does, in part, is it allows what I was telling you for the states to get aid in, in certain ways. And this is where you go read to see how they're going to do what they're doing. Given there's not another reason, which I think actually works and invokes Title 50 a little quicker, but neither here nor there. Let's go look at the code. Again, I'm going to go to uh, Cornell because of the notes. In this case, there's not much I'm going to be talking to you about. Just on the face of it. On the face of it. The Stafford Act, you can go to Wiki, just learn a little bit about it. And uh, okay, let's let's focus in on the on the guns. They can take your guns away. Everyone's on threat uh, because they can take your guns away. Everyone's on a, up in arms at the arms that they're not going to have here soon. And all they'll have is their arms, as bare as they might be. And as summer comes in, they might actually be in tank tops. Yeah, do they really have the power? And so let's go look. It's under Title 42. The Stafford Act under Title 42. We go look close at that. That's the United States Municipal Code. Well, we're right back to the district, aren't we? No, I'm not going to disregard and confunnel this and you can just say, oh, that's not pertain to me. I want to show you, even if you embrace this, it never says they can take your gun. In fact, it says just the opposite. And if I had people that are so um, as adamant as the coronavirus and conf gun confiscation guy to read first and then offer... What you do, instead of taking it like Hurricane Karina, or Catherine, whatever the heck it was they referred to, instead of that, you actually enforce the, the provisions that were there. You take the black and white I've told you that exists. If he would just tell people that, we would stop focusing on the wrong thing and raise up a, in the wrong directions and actually give these people the authority to harm us the way they have. But let's go to Title 42, and we see... A section of 5121, the findings and declarations. And you go inside this and you read what they want to do. And this is the Congress hereby finds and declares that because disasters often cause life, loss of life, human suffering, loss of income, and property loss and damage. And let me end right there. It goes on and on about what they're, all the benefits they're going to bring. And that's a benefit because what they saw talk about is property loss. Let's go to reference to Virginia's Constitution and says that that gun is tied to the protection of your property. How can anything underneath this come and take your gun? Should be the first question coming out of your mind if you just read and not get incited into certain types of well, her uh, hysterias, I guess. All right, so that's that's uh, one section, just right off the top. I want to go to the one I want to point out where it actually speaks to your guns. I did it in reverse. I say that because I'm sorry to sound mind. This is how I told you I was going to be maybe touching these as I go through. You have the, defer the Congressional Findings and Declarations at 521. What they were talking about in the video is your gun confiscation. What I wanted to point out is there's a section about firearms. It happens to be the last section. 5207. So if Congress Congress wants to keep property loss at a minimum, and we can go to the states and see part of that's protected by your arms, and we know that the government agents aren't too smart, the Congress has to de tell them what they get to do, I should find where that became a question, I should find a discussion relative to 
firearms being off limits. And I use firearms advisedly. I'm not talking about arms. They say firearms. These are the federally controlled things. These are those things in commerce. I'm not going to go down the other trail where they're not at all, but I do touch it when we're talking about the Virginia posterity having the right to use arms to protect themselves, not firearms. All right, that's not, I don't want to divide this discussion. But right here at 5207, it says firearms policies. Should I take a time right here to read it to you? I think I will, even though you should be able to read this stuff for yourself. Prohibitions on confiscation of firearms. Let me offer, that's in bold. It's a title for a section. It's, it's, it tells you the gist of what the statement in law, the legal, is going to be. This is a prohibition on the confiscation of firearms. It doesn't actually make the law you would assert. This does, the, the text. No officer or employee of the United States, including any member of the uniformed services or person operating pursuant to or under color of federal law or receiving federal funds or under control of any federal officer and providing services to such an officer, employee, or other officer while acting in support of relief from a major disaster or emergency may. Let me go back. Do you understand when they take federal funds, uh, state laws say that you have to follow federal law, number one. Number two, when they bring in an emergency, the DHS become, or the FEMA becomes the federal authority. This applies in every emergency. Why? Because the federal territory is overlaid by this umbrella of military control, as you'll f find when you go look at other laws. But here, just stick to the emergency. Federal authority rules. State officials have to comport to this as well. They may do a temporarily or permanently seize or authorized seizure of any firearm possession is of which is not prohibited under federal, state, or local law other than for forfeiture and compliance with federal law or as evidence in a criminal investigation. Let me invoke the Virginia, because we went through this, the Virginia Constitution. Does it show any limitation on your right to ma maintain the bare arms? Here says if you under a criminal investigation. Wouldn't that be underneath the law? If you're not a criminal and you have the right of the posterity, is there anything here that they can temporarily seize actually? They make a prevention provision for temporary seizure, but it's under a constraint. And in one condition. Right? So, go through, no officer may temporarily or permanently seize. Is not an, uh, a vast power to confiscate weapons. Number two, require registration of any firearm of which the registration is not required by federal, state, or local law. And I won't get into the word state here uh, yet, uh, I mean at all, because you can go parse that through as I said before. Number three, prohibit possession of any firearm, promulgate any rule, regulation, or order prohibiting possession of any firearm in any place or by any person where such possession is not otherwise prohibited by federal, state, or local law. You hear, pro, you hear a confiscation right here, folks, at all? Four, prohibit the carrying of firearms by any person otherwise authorized to carry firearms under federal, state, or local law. Is local law your constitution that says you have a right to bear arms uninfringed? I, I would say so, solely because such a person is operating under the direction or control or supervision of a federal agency in support of relief. Is that a, con a confiscation right? Limitation. Here's where we may see a little bit of a hedge. Nothing in this section shall be construed to prohibit any person in subsection A, those prohibited, from in requiring the temporary surrender of fire, firearm as a condition to of for entry into any mode of transportation used for rescue or evacuation during a major disaster or emergency. See here, direct disaster or emergency. That's what they declare, a disaster or emergency, and those are different. You have to go look at those as well. I didn't want to, I, that's part of when you read when you read about the Stafford Act. Provided that such temporary surrendered firearm is returned at the completion of such rescue or evacuation. Do you hear a confiscation right here, folks? Here, private rights of action. This is an interesting provision you hardly ever see is a right of action for something, anything. Uh, in general, the title, not relevant, the text is, any individual aggrieved by a violation of this section may seek relief in an action at law, suit in equity, suit in equity, 
or, or other proper proceedings for redress against any person who subjects such individual or causes such individual to be subjected to the deprivation of any of the rights, privileges, and immunities secured by this section. Remedies. Number two, remedies. In addition to an existing remedy in law or equity, on top of your local remedy as a posterity under any law, and in, an individual aggrieved by the seizure or confiscated arm in the violation of this section may bring an action for return of such firearm in the United States District Court, the territorial one, in the district in which that individual resides or in which such firearm may be found. What if you're the posterity? Are you a resident? Haven't they done a breach in the law, an equity breach right there? Trust breach? I think so. Number three, just what I tell you all, folks. Number three, attorney fees in an, in an ad, uh, action or proceeding to enforce this section, the court shall award the prevailing party, other than the United States, a reasonable attorney fees as part of the cost. So here's saying, you sue the people that do this to you, not the government. Just like I've been telling you. And so, here it is, folks. Did you hear anything there that has the, during this disaster in this law, that they can take your firearms and confiscate them? Okay, you have to say, I have to say, admit, yes, in one condition, and that's only in, quote, transportation during a rescue, and then relieved immediately. Now, what I would suggest is for those of us that are there, if you're ahead of point, and you get into one of the, around these areas, and you get that there's something's going on in a rescue situation, through this current disaster now, a national disaster going on, you copy this out and have it in your bag of law. Now, if you avoid public transportation, I don't know where this says, as the other guy was promoting to his followers, extensive as they were, that there's a gun confiscation that's possible. As I say uh, in this regard, they only they, they get away with what they can. Whether or not there's an, an author, well, when there is no authorization. And this is what happened, well, Katrina, I guess was the name. This is what that happened. No one, no one, no people had any scruples about having a bag of law. You can only go, okay, well, we need your help, but you, you can't diminish us. You can't take my protection. There's nothing here. And if you go back through that, you'll see, well, if they can't do this during rescue and emergency, how do they do it when there is no emergency? Oh, boy, my mind goes back to Virginia and all the people there, oh, the power you all had. You still have it, but I don't see it coming back out. And I don't see it coming into the next point. That is another area of encroachment. At any rate, so I hope you hear. I wish, my comment here was to this was, I wish people would just learn to read. One. I wish people would read for once before they speak. I give the link to this section 521. And then I, t uh, actually I say to this one section, and then a 520, 5121, I say, more limits on government when parsed correctly. There's even more. When you see what the purpose is, each one of those, when it's violated, becomes another cause of action. And I say here, again, they get away with what they can get away with where there is no lawful or just authority available to get away with it. We hand it to them. And these videos do that. They set the mind up for failure instead of the gentleman saying, you know, they're going to, if they come and, and try to confiscate or try to run your life into the ground in any way, you have this to, to provide to the, to the, to the oppressor. But you got to understand the mentality of someone that would do that anyway. And so I don't want to get lost in that part, but here it's this problem, uh, the oppression, the military consequence of our life underneath the cover of this emergent disaster, emergency of corona, whatever, covers up some stories, covers up some things. And I got this came through the Twitter uh, that says, this man was murdered by cops at 4.30 a.m. today. He wasn't even a suspect. They murdered him because of red flag laws. Gun control is murder. And so I went to the link. The gentleman's name is Duncan Limp. Underneath all this corona hysteria, where 10 people die in Washington, they close down and they, they put martial law on you by removing certain civil liberties and empowering the administrators even more. And I hear crickets. Just here, just a couple days ago, a gentleman uh, is uh, supposedly under a warrant uh, to arrest him. 
Maryland SWAT team serving red flag warrant shoot kill 21-year-old man asleep in his bed. So if you don't think that the coronavirus is um, martial law enough and you listen to this and you don't understand that you're living in it, uh, I don't know really more to say that the people in Maryland are now facing the problem of Virginia. And prospects are not so good. It turns out, probably, that there was actually nothing the gentleman did wrong. This is another execution that they're claiming is a red flag. They claim in the actual stories it wasn't red flag. There were other so-called firearms re violations, which a judge signed off on. The gentleman was in his, uh, fair, I guess, his parents' home sleeping with his girlfriend. She gets wounded as well. They shoot through his bedroom window to kill him. All on conjectural stuff. Uh, I mean, I don't. I want to read it, but I don't want to read it. It, it just is the, like the, you know, I want to say crushed. Uh, it, it crushes a bit here. I don't get affected like that, but it, this is a crushing story. If you have any uh, attachment to people being innocent, again, remember I did that. It, it presumed innocent when. Not in a military occupation. Not where the presumptive decisions are made without due process. There's more, I got a couple links here that talk about this story where the gentleman is executed by the cops. The problem was living in a house with his folks and other people in the house, they're not talking about whether or not the guns they found were anything. He Apparently, by the second uh, loose rounds discussion, story, he had no record. He was somebody outspoken on the internet about being with the militia and other things. And this is where we get back to be careful uh, what you let out anymore. And he may be the first victim. Part of me wants to keep talking. I keep wanting to jump over to the fact that we people in Maryland, uh, you don't step up like the folks in Virginia ought to, and you start getting to your organic rights where they can't even take a in an emergency, but when you're on a piece of transportation, a, your firearm. And they can go out and execute you under the color of some violation. Demi forget the, con the, the, the gun rights here. What about all your due process that's just destroyed? And you're not insisting on it as a people. This is a thing that is as important as the martial law obviously coming under plausible reasons through coronavirus, that I'm hoping people in Virginia get it. I mean, the, the one that I, this, the people on the internet, their mimetic responses aren't, aren't going to do it. Their quotes on the internet, uh, what's supposed to happen, aren't going to do it. The uh, feeling, uh, the RIP is not going to do it. The threat that this is not going to go un, unchecked is not going to do it. It's the actual proper function to remove this threat to everybody. My sense would tell me this should be the this should be the match being lit. And I say that from a due process standpoint. And we're seeing evidence of the presumptive nature that the courts, the judiciary we thought was judicial and justice, is, ev is able to go and do. We see uh, that a judge would sign the so-called no-knock warrant. The people in Maryland need to now step up and stop. This is not justice. It's not due process. It's not law. It's literally just a foreign occupation. And the so-called posterity needs to step up. Those non-resident men and women who now see that you're not protected, that SWAT serves no actual purpose more than to stifle those that the law said would protect themselves against that very oppression. Uh, the ironic, well, maybe the prophetic thing that came to me that drove it home at some level the last thing that Duncan Limp posts on Twitter was in response to John McAfee responding to the Trump uh, signing, signing that bill that essentially makes it illegal to speak against so-called Jews and things in the, the law about the campuses. He was responding to this. 
way back in 2019. The last post that he put was a statement. The Constitution is dead. Now, for those of you that need, understand that the Constitution was the limit on government as a, almost identical to what I read in that one act. It, it limits you in words. And you see this as an extension. This should be a call to... I, have, I, I, I hesitate to say a call to arms. I do not want to incite stupidity. This is not the call to arms like that. This is the call to step up, set up the record that prepares the way. Because the gentleman, in a prophetic way, declared what was going to happen to him. And the only way that could happen is if that's the truth. It's the last post he's ever made. The Constitution is dead. Now he is. And whether or not I agree with any Constitution, whether or not I could show you the invalidity of them as far as a protection is irrelevant because as an organic established people wanting peace in their life as a majority you have all the power my suggestion as I suggested in my Virginia paper discussions in the arms is you can find in three sec short sections including maybe a fourth one how to set it up so that you do that without you firing a shot remember they're taking down all your civil liberties through coronavirus without firing a shot where are you? I've asked you this before, those of you that are so you know, proud of your Second Amendment. How are you going to stop this foe and invader? Uh, how is your Second Amendment stop this foe, even the foe foe, huh. the foe foe invader? How are you going to stop it with your Second Amendment right? How is Duncan Limp going to stop this condition now? For those of you that said this will not go un, this will not be an injustice, not repaid, I, re I uh, urge you to do it correctly. A lot of people came out doing it wrong immediately. And this is the thing I see. You don't think about it. You don't think about where you are, what's going on, why we're here. And so the last thing that came from him was the Constitution is dead. In fact, I see now the proof of it. And I see lots of words, lots of RIP, and nobody to properly vindicate this problem which is so many steps down and away from the Constitution that it's uh, scary that people allow it. So in the same vein as I was hoping and supporting the people of Virginia to take advantage while they had the power, and they still have it right there, they can still develop it, uh, I think Maryland is now on full notice. Uh, this is like way beyond red flag. Uh, the, but beyond that, the fact that a judge can sign your death warrant and I'm not sure, but I don't know that there's a capital punishment in that state either. There should have been markers along the highway to destruction that a vigilant mass of educated people ought to have been interested enough to stop before it got to where we now have what appears to me to be a very intelligent, caring guy. Don't know anything about him. Uh, in fact, I think he had his name so Socrates, so Socrates in the middle of his name. I don't even know what his, the, you know, I'm not so aware to even know what his uh, avatar name was. I can't remember now what it was. But it didn't sound like there was anything of a real threat. It looked like he cared about where he lived and whom he lived with. Well, young quant. I don't know what that means. I guess I go look at the words. Quant means something, right? So, but he put Socrates in the middle of his name. And as I say that, I wouldn't, don't even know if I'd appreciate I don't know. I'd have to talk with him. Maybe he's he was like Socrates. Maybe he has a character about him that rubs people the wrong way. way. Like Socrates sound like, sounded like he was intelligent when actually he was just exploiting people's the failure in people's arguments. And he was real good at it. And anyway, doesn't matter. An innocent man, presumed innocent man, is now murdered under the color of authority. And I hope the people in in the states, certainly the state he died, take cognizance of this and move to stop it. And I'm talking about, again, the lead that comes from the pencil into paper first. There's a very important reason why you go that way. And I explained it in my Virginia cases back 
back, what, December or something before the first of the year, so I can't remember now. So, uh, it's kind of sad. I don't, you know, I never, you never want to hear that, you know, see this, but this is where we are. If you don't understand the martial law, you're down, and you don't see it in the coronavirus, and you don't understand the due process, and you've kind of given up even that that's even existent, that's going to come on us. If I look over real quick, thank you, Grimner, Quant. An expert in the use of mathematics and related subjects, particularly in investment management and stock trading. Well, that makes sense because if you look at his website, his Twitter, that's what he does. That's perfect. Thank you. That's a quant. I thought that there was a definition for it. Failing brain, folks. But anyway, gentleman is dead. All on the presumption that he was no good. No presumption of it. On the statement of an informant. You want to get me back to the beginning of the broadcast? The same informants that will inform on you to the senseless worker. In a district, you don't even exist, actually. And I think if people understood these things, I would, well, maybe it's my, my utopia. Uh, if people understood these things and understood to bring those things out first, we wouldn't have this nonsense going on. You understand if there's a senseless worker on your door and you can show the, the, stat, the code that says that that's not proper, that the United States federal government is extending its reach to you through that agent. And that should be a clue. Something is terribly, terribly wrong. And the other question I would have then, how did the state, the, the, secretary, the Commerce Secretary of the state, make a plan that included you when you're not part of that system? The system, you're just a man or woman, in but not of. And as long as we let these questions slide beyond uh, question, beyond a challenge, they can these people continue. And the Constitution is dead. And so, I don't know. I'm really, I keep looking at that. Really sad. It is really a sad condition. And what's really sad is that there's not going to be real justice for this and no justice in the future for any of you all. And that is all on us, you and I, to resolve. Because these criminals have justified the harm that they do to us as a benefit. And when you go read what they're treating you like as some prisoner, and you agree without uh, without objection, I don't know what more to say. This is predictable consequence. And as I say that in the military thing, uh, if you're listening, Solomon, thank you for calling in to Grimner. I appreciate hearing that you're doing well. More interested that uh, you may have a place to be called, and not that I want to, just to let, just because my mind says when you are wandering around, you're wandering the wilderness. It, Sometimes difficult. Anyway, thank you, and yes, we're thinking about you a lot. So be good with yourself and take care. But we have a military consequence. What are we going to really do about it? How much more do we need, folks? Really, how much more do we need? The gate, the noose is closing. We've got evidence of this all the time. When does the noose get too tight? Uh, we have talked to you about this next information here um, as part of that p provision that they use the adulteration of what you thought was could happen in legalized ways, attorney-twisted ways, to bring you into something that you, again, I said you can think and you can do innocent, but you're presumed guilty and they can make up stuff to bring you into an interaction with them that they justify because they get a Bar Association member signature to come and execute you. And it never, ever gets tested, and then it only gets tested with ignorant people using attorneys again that go before courts that already have the answer, and there's no ability to defend against that because you didn't know how. But I want to move now and transition over to expanding this military state and how they're getting the surveillance and the intelligence and how they make innocent people and kill them, even if you don't have anything you've ever done. And this is, again ongoing notice to us on how it's being done. If you're close to the scene of a crime, police can demand Google hand over your data. And you you think, that's oh, what do I do, folks? There's a guy riding a bike around a neighborhood, 
and he was using one of them health monitors I told you don't get, and it gave him a geolocation that was in front of the house where the murder happened, or the crime happened, three times, and so they came after him. He was presumed guilty, and he had to get an attorney to defend himself, and he was lucky to get out, is the story here. Gainesville, is that in Florida? Is that the only Gainesville in this country? The Gainesville Police Department suspected an innocent man was involved in a burglary, so naturally they requested that Google give them all of his location data. We've talked about this geofencing nonsense. We've talked about reverse, all this reverse warrants, how they use this as a tool. None of it's been really being tested. This is an innocent man. Let me remind you, and tie all this stuff together, I hope, continually. Remember I told you when you go read about the, the coronavirus excuse to quarantine people because they're presumed to be uh, guilty of the being a vector to this contagion. They were not guilty. They were not contagious. They were negative. To me, is no different the martial authority they're using today. And here's the evidence of it. Again, the Internet of Things, these trappings that they give us, that we take them on, and they're being used against us. And I guess the story that kind of keeps getting in my mind here, uh, there was a burglar, it was a burglary of an elderly woman's home. This gentleman went by. What it took for him to release, be relieved of this. Uh, remember, this is the, you, you, I guess we put ourselves in these little bubbles and clouds like it's not going to happen. Once it does happen, there's a talk about being life being sucked up. You know, I know this from experience, just involving myself with my own, really rolling up my sleeves in my own cases. It takes your life. And they come after you. And when they want you, they make up all the excuses. And now, now you see, what was in Maryland, they get execution warrants. In a state that has no execution power, apparently. And even if they did, right? But here we have it, folks. How much more do you need to know that the government will do things that they can get away with? They presume in re, folks, without an adversary, without a question. They have the power to, stay, to steal away all your liberties. Yeah, my mind, I get so my, there's all these voices that start coming to my mind. Not literally, it's in a thought. I'm not crazy, really, really, I'm not, really. Uh, the objections I see, like in chats or in emails and stuff about certain things. When I say this stuff, is it oh, due process or who are you going to do or whatever? Folks, you got to do something. Otherwise, it could happen that someone, especially under the so-called red flag excuse, which may not be in Maryland what happened, which is even worse, folks, if you understand this. It's even worse if there was no actual red flag authority. The thing could be told upon you, an informant tells upon you, or is invented by the cops themselves. And they come to talk with you and murder you. It's not any constitution in that. No limit on government. No limit on oppression. No limit on tyranny. And I see people want to profess, give lip service to any kind of constitutional right. While a man stated on his last dying breath, if you will... The, the, the Constitution is dead. And everybody will say, yeah, it is. And then the next guy dies. The next woman dies. Is that the kind of prison you're wanting, you're developed for yourself to agree to? Or do we take the mass? We understand that this is not good. I on That video that I'm a little critical of, why did you just go do some reading first before you told everybody your guns can be confiscated and show they can't empower people and say, okay, now we're going to go set up and make sure this is going to be in a certain way. Instead of just sitting on the Internet and on YouTube and watching each other jack our jaws about all the things that we see as a wrong. And that's wrong. I mean, well, our perceptions are totally screwed up. So they can... You think nothing can happen. I'm trying to point out all the technologies coming on that we agree for ourselves to be brought in that is being utilized in legalisms to twist and contort, twist and contort, attorning your rights under the flimsiest of authorities, if, if any at all. I mean, really, I keep thinking about that Washington interim guidance. What? On multiple coronaviruses? 
Are you kidding me? No, it's a natural thing now. It doesn't. It's not special. On ten deaths. I mean, we could go through that other argument I did last week about all the other deaths they've never instituted an emergency for. Okay, so uh, as I think more and more on this, as I've been going through today, I just can't say I'm depressed. I'm just depressed. I just wonder about us. I wonder why we complain and then don't resolve it. I wonder why we allow this stuff to come down on us. We're more uh, toilet paper is more important. Uh, not to diminish the importance of toilet paper. But everything in its place and its time and its course. And so before you are in the place where you are controlled in your toilet paper, because they've extended this ex this whole thing out till December like they did with SARS, through the election and all the nonsense and turmoil that's going to happen. Uh, and then all of a sudden you are going to have to go to somebody to get your permission to get your role and your food, and you see in China, will you start to step up to say, wait a minute, challenge all these things? Will you start to challenge how they can take away civil liberties on the flimsiest of suggestion? I say that, my mind says the answer is going to be no, but I'm going to tell it to you anyway, because that's what we have to start doing. Not that my opinion on you matters. But there's an opinion nonetheless that keeps telling, talking to me that I can't eliminate in my brain. Okay, so you can be made out, you can be alleged to be anything now on the on just a statement of a foreigner, bureaucrat, whatever jurisdiction, whatever it is, even a local authority that doesn't have a clue that's making felonies and violating the organic constitution against people that it, their authority doesn't actually apply until they can actually demonstrate the need. Not by suggestion. There has to be evidence. And that is required that they can't suspend the courts. I told you that was coming last week. They suspend the courts. How do you defend yourself? How do you even do an equity action? And I'm going to show you that there's an answer inside of that. Did you read the, anybody read this stuff to understand uh, that it happened at all? Let me explain one little thing that was interesting. You always look for the, uh, for the, the hitch and the giddy up for them. The oh, the one case type case they can have is any case that doesn't require a face to face hearing. And I don't know about you, but that screamed in re private property rights equity. A filing for injunction and or declaration. So where I've been saying that there's really a closed court in your civil liberties, there's one, the face-to-face, -face, the lack of a face-to-face -face hearing that you can actually execute on. Will you do that? Will you experiment, even, even if that much, while well, you're all sitting and you're twiddling your thumbs in your homes anyway, will you do that? Will you work that out? I don't know. I can only ask about that. I can only ask that you consider these things as they lock your life down and give them the authority that I'm telling you is I don't have a real good answer against in trying to avoid it. And if you are all in a prison, then none of you will be able to stop that senseless worker because you're all deemed to be in a federal prison right where you are. And where you are is deemed a district, and that's a military district. And they have the territorial court to have the decisions once they decide to start doing the hearings again on their terms because they won't lift that open access to the rules that the administrator gets to do to keep everybody safe and secure, to keep their soldiers, the clerks and the people of the court, safe and secure, just like the Libra Code talks to us. And when they get you in, then you maybe you'll be lucky. Trial of an alleged Vault 7 CIA leaker ends in hung jury. So here we can go ahead and get collected up. We can be told that we're, we're the worst spy in the world. And maybe, maybe, maybe we can convince the jury to be hung. They hang the jury, if that's justice. 
And we find out that the Vault 7 CIA leaker ends in a hung jury was important in my case, in my mind, with the CIA national security, Assange, what military excuses come down upon us, how they violate us, what they present as far as a plausibility. We now have a jury trial that even the way it's, again, alleged Vault 7, this story talks about the allegation still. It doesn't give the commitment. On Monday, a federal jury of Manhattan could not agree on whether a, 30, a convicted 31-year-old Joshua Schulte on eight counts, including illegally gathering and transmission of national defense information, according to the New York Times, Schulte was convicted on two other counts, contempt of court, and making false statements. Folks, there's, listen, if you just didn't, if you kept the right to remain silent, the worst they treat you is like uh, Manning, who just got replaced. Uh, you can try to commit suicide for yourself. Maybe they'll let you out early. Uh, but the only thing that got him was his misspeaking because they couldn't get him on the actual charges. And what was interesting is something I read through here. That what they got partly were confused on is something I told you that you get to do, uh, that they, the government itself has given the information that it couldn't be that there was anything particularly secret that you were giving out. When they gave out all that information that we found out was uh, there the the, the in, encroachments on the digital field the world uh, to spy on you, and that they could cover up all of this what the government does, there was really no way that they could make a clear cut case. And if you read in here, you'll see you'll see a, a bit about that. We're back to what I tell you about avoidance. You create a record. You make sure the record's made in order to be able to avoid, even if they do collect you up. You can avoid the worst of the tyrant tyranny. This is a very difficult case to be faced with. Probably just, well, it's in the same vein of national security. That's why the military gets invoked in Title uh, Title 50. In fact, I think it was, uh, Sound Mind sent me a, a link. I think I I about looking at one of these Title 50 things, and I looked at the another section, and it says right in Title 50 that the military can be invoked to, this is the, the weapon in the biological weapons section, that the military can be used to disseminate the vaccine. Well, what does that imply the uh, vaccine is? And so uh, we can go, look with no eyes, or we can open our eyes and start seeing, and then I'm asking the next step, understand the black and white, learn what it tells us, don't get into hysteria. Don't take for granted anything you're told. Work it through. If if decisions are made on no proof, that's an answer. That's an engagement that you can begin to protect yourself. You don't have to be persuaded and, and balled up. It doesn't mean that it will protect you. The more you have a bag of law and reason with you, the more you understand the basics of the law and you know that that extortion and coercion sits there to help I just read, read a, an article came right through right before. There was a shootout between the FBI and a local uh, t Kentucky um, uh, officer, a constable. They're elected officials, no less. That they, the FBI, is apparently searching down on on rights violations. Now, why this doesn't extend to this coronavirus, I don't know. But my point is, is that that's starting to change now. That that was a silence in in uh, justice, if you will. I'm not saying it's an answer. I'm saying that there's more eyeballs looking to the. No, it's getting so bad now. They have to make it look like they're checking something. And this is an opportunity for us to do that. So thank you, Grimner, for what you do at RealLibertyMedia.com and uh, Jules at uh, UCY.TV. Thank you very much. And Sound Minds and Normalization of Ignorance and Just in Case, all you guys, Gary, uh, Daryl, thank you for everything you guys are doing to support the broadcast or send me information or. Do your thing. Uh, appreciate all that you're doing. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature willing. that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose.
but that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. <laughs>